year is 2552 and the Battle of New Mombasa is coming to a bitter and gruesome end. While things couldn't possibly get any more horrific, something much worse than brutes arrived via slip space just hours ago. Overwhelming the city in minutes, the flood descended and completely transformed the battlescape. Now Alpha 9's only objective is to hold back the flood as long as possible. This is my Flood Firefight Diorama. Folks, this one is insane. And I want to thank everybody at the start of this video for the unrivaled support on this project. Like, you guys have just rallied behind me at every step. Every late night, I've been thinking, you know, I really need to push forward and get this done. I mean, a little bit of backstory to this one. This has been in the pipeline for months. I got the idea from Matty Crafts when he did a Flood Firefight diorama video as well, but I wanted to just upscale it as much as possible. This thing includes uh, the large majority of my flood, most of my custom flood, and just so much more. And this is the Oni Bridge Diorama. You know this, you're familiar with this. I've been using this diorama for a couple of years now. It's just so perfect, you know, if it ain't broke, you absolutely should not fix it. And I 100% think that's the case with this one. So I'm gonna go through uh, my thoughts, my planning, my execution, all the little Easter eggs and tidbits and everything I can cover. And I just wanna also point out the lunacy of uh, when I'm doing this. I am leaving uh, for Minnesota today, but I thought I'd just film this, get it out of the way. I've actually been putting it off because it's a big project. There's so much that went into this, and yes, I put it off. I wanted to make sure I did it right. Uh, I wanted to give it enough time, and apparently enough time is the last few hours before I leave for Minnesota, but you know, I'm completely packed, and it's kind of in line with what I like to do. I did my largest Banish diorama the day before I moved to Hong Kong, and I did uh, one of my largest Halo Infinite dioramas the day before I left Hong Kong. It's just, for some reason, it's kind of like a rush, like doing it all last minute, putting so much effort into something that like should have been done months ago. I just think it's really fun. Most people probably wouldn't agree with me on that one. So uh, let's start from the very beginning of this diorama, which is the start of the bridge. So this bridge was originally made to facilitate the opening of the Oni facility mission on Halo 3 ODST. That's why we've got those charges ready for Mickey and Dutch to blow the bridge. But this time, yeah, they're, <laughs> they're definitely not going to be blowing the bridge this time. I mean, this would technically be the perfect moment, but you'd have to sacrifice some of your brother which maybe uh, would not be something you'd like to do. And we'll talk about what ODSTs we've got on this diorama. It's most of Alpha 9 plus a load of others. So I built this on a live stream and you guys are always so crazy. I originally said I wanted it to just be four ODSTs, you know, like ODST Firefight, but then people kept on saying, oh no, what about this ODST from the drop pod? Oh, I really like that ODST. So I added more and more and more. And uh, you know me, I like to cram in as much detail as I can into my dioramas. Some people say they're overpacked, but I really don't care. I just want to put in as much as I uh, want. I mean, the my dioramas, right? And I love to fill them to the brim. So we're gonna start with the rookie, and he is doing what the rookie does best, which is kind of just lone wolfing it. Uh, we'll talk about the probability of these characters surviving, which is basically zero. They've been completely overwhelmed. This is a very dire situation, and really they're just gonna try and take out as many flood as they can before they get floodified themselves. If I was an ODST, I think I'd stand on the end of the bridge, and I think I'd take out as many as I could, and when I ran out of my clip, I'd just jump. <laughs> I, do, I wouldn't let the flood take me. But yeah, so the rookie is uh, shotgunning this flood combat form. I actually just used this flood tank to support this uh, combat form because I didn't want Tack very visible on his feet. So instead, he's being held up by the flood tank, which I think works pretty well. We got a load of combat forms on this diorama. I cannot wait for new articulation combat forms. And up here, Whoa, look at that. We've got quite a few of these guys. The Halo 4 Flood, and this one is from the Flood Cyclops. It also came out in one of the Blind Bag series. You can pop and swap these with new articulation. So I've got him firing a Spanker rocket launcher as a Halo 2 Brute. I thought that was awesome. This rocket launcher comes in the Grunt Goblin. Further down, we got more combat forms. They're racing along the bridge to support, well, I don't think they're trying to support anyone. I think they're just looking for a meal. <laughs> 
Not Emil, Amil. Ha, <laughs> you get it. I gave some of them weapons, you know, it's kind of just randomized, and uh, that one's got a colored one. I, I, I try and give colored weapons as much as possible, of course. And the rookie is not alone. He's backed up by this green ODST. I love this one from Challenger Blind Bag series. He's got a silver battle rifle and a great comms pack shooting this uh, combat form, but I wanted to make it out like their situation was truly dire. So every time a good guy is kind of getting the upper hand, there's always someone to ruin their day. There's another flood tank and another flood tank, but this one has met its sorry end from a Spartan laser shot from the one and only Sergeant Avery Johnson. He is back to back with Dutch. I think that's a great combo. They're both sort of heavy weapon specialists in a way. They both got Spartan lasers, new and old design. The new one kind of holds the Spartan laser shot inside, though I do need a tiny bit of tack to keep that in place. Dutch has a suppressed SMG, gorgeous, and muzzle flaring right into this custom brute. And yeah, there's a lot of customs on this diorama. This brute was sent to me by a fan and looks amazing. Got a lot of great clay on there. And obviously you'll see little popcorn flood all over this thing. I especially like the ones that I've managed to get climbing up a wall. Just a bit of transparent pieces inside. There's another one over there climbing up the tower. Leaping through the air is another elite. This was made by the same guy that produced that brute. He only has one arm. He's just gonna be leaping from this support beam, which has a little popcorn on. They actually all have little, oh wait, wh where's that one gone? Oh, I knew one <laughs> fell off before. I didn't know where that went. Okay, a little popcorn on each one. This one's jumping through the air. He's gonna try and stealth mode over to Johnson, but Johnson actually has a bigger fish to fry. This active camo flood combat form and a flood tank. I, it's just not looking good for any of our characters, I'm afraid. It is really bleak. I love these flames that I added to the scorpion. I actually really love this scorpion. I was gonna switch it up for something else, but it just works so well. I love how you can detach each of the caterpillar tracks and just have them uh, to the sides and the cannon just uh, off to its side as well. We got this main support column that runs right across. I especially love those transparent bricks that give it sort of a glass ceiling effect and that UNSC logo. We got flood combat forms galore, but some really special ones over there. Get a load of this guy. Another Halo 4 style flood attached to the jump pack brute from the radar wreckage. I also like using these tiny little uh, sort of green translucent transparent pieces as muzzle flares for our covenant weaponry and a flood honor guard as well. A Amazing custom work. This is actually an old articulation flood honor guard attached to a new articulation elite's body to create the illusion of a new articulation flood honor guard. And that one is also actually all of the customs are featured in my custom flood video. That'll have come out before this one, so you should definitely check it out. There's one more Halo 4 style flood, this time on an NMPD's body. We just had to have a floodified NMPD, right? Flood combat forms everywhere. I like to bunch the colors together as well. So we got three orange ones here. I imagine they were some kind of elite fire team and they all got infected at the same time, so sort of moved together. This is one of my favorite parts of the diorama, if not my favorite part. I got this little flood piece from a flood infected ghost. It gives a great idea of biomass building up around the Oni facility. Then these two flood are trying to breach this defensive line on top of the tower. This is the main comms tower. This has to be defended and it's got lots of wounded NMPD casualties. What are you gonna do in this situation? Like all you're gonna try and do is save as much life as possible and you might need backup later if they can recover. So I think definitely the wise move is defending this tower, making sure that no one gets up here, allowing uh, frequent radio communication from the two snipers to be able to go out to the rest of uh, Oni and the UNSC. So yeah, we got some NMPD survivors, but unfortunately one of them's not gonna last long. He's actually been grabbed hold of by this flood infected Billy the Grunt. The way that I had them grabbing together is just this tiny translucent rod. From a distance you can't see it. I mean, obviously up close you can see it's clearly a rod they're both holding onto, but it's quite discreet once you uh, back up a little bit. Let's take a look at the grand picture here. Oh my goodness. There's just so much going on. So much color, uh, so much energy. Like, ah, uh, this is a really, again, just a dire, dire situation. And of course your eyes will have been drawn to this gorgeous flood juggernaut. This is a Bam Bam Productions custom and has stolen my heart so many times. It's made using pieces from Destiny Hive figures and is legendary. A load of combat forms overwhelming a flame marine. The flame marine has dropped his flamethrower after being over overwhelmed, so Mickey decided to pick it up and try and take on this flood juggernaut. He's got backup from the last remaining flame marine. That one is torching this combat form. I've added a few flames either side of the combat form. Again, some more flood biomass, this time from a drop pod and popcorn. Literally everywhere, like... <laughs> 
Oh, I just feel so sorry for poor Alpha 9. They are completely overwhelmed. Like, they're doomed. They're, they're legitimately doomed. Even on top of the tower, we've got a flood tank, a drop pod. I know it's pretty unrealistic that a drop pod would be able to uh, land on a roof, but I wanted to put it there. I basically didn't have any other space. Out of it came this custom flood combat form. It looks amazing and has an LS3D printing plasma rifle, again with a muzzle flare. And we have another dope custom here, flood infected Avery. Avery has to be on every one of my dioramas. He's my mascot. He's the staple guy. So I thought, why not floodify him? Well, this is a custom sent to me again by a fan, but I thought he had to be included on this diorama. The ODST surveillance drone is being overwhelmed by two combat forms. Like, literally, even the surveillance drone is being taken down here. That's how doom and gloom this situation is. A flood carrier down here. I always like to put a popcorn just jumping out of the top of these guys. Lots of detail. Just like, this is probably my most detailed diorama. It's my largest flood diorama by far. So many figures, like just the figure count alone makes this thing insane. And I also added some nice foliage to this diorama. These nice trees. I've also added some plants like this purple arrangement. A couple of dead brutes for effect. This is a really good idea. Like, like I said, I, I built this on a live stream, so there were lots of suggestions from the chat. I built a flood infected brute honor guard and under here is an NMPD trooper that's still alive. And yes, I apologize for the little bit of dust there or a lot of dust. But yeah, that NMPD trooper is still alive. He's banging on the window. He's kind of just panicking that the flood are literally everywhere killing all of his friends. So it's not a good day for him. Oh man, I'll tell you who it's not a good day for. Dare. Veronica Dare. If you can tell, she's not looking too hot. I replaced one of her arms with a grunt Arm, and that's to represent a completely infected arm. Now, Buck, he's a hothead. He's a maverick. He wouldn't just let Dare die. I think he'd probably risk everyone's safety to try and bring her in. Just sort of obsessed with the notion that she could get better if they find a doctor. So he's defending her with a grenade launcher like a badass. And she's got her soak on pistol, but she's fading fast. Buck was hoping to get her up the tower to the other survivors and that trooper, the sergeant, is still trying to get them up there. But let's be honest, that arm looks like it weighs a ton of bricks right now, so she ain't getting to safety. I'm sorry, Buck, it's, it's probably game over for you. A brute certainly has met his game over there. I included this in my part four of the Oni Bridge Diorama because it was to tease the flood coming. Couple more details before we sign off. We've got a flood infected ghost just piled up there and the combat form about to leap down. Like I said, anytime someone's doing well, they're about to get overwhelmed. He's such a badass. He's got a katana and a magnum. Shooting that combat form without even looking at it, his eyes are focused on the captain or basically his uh, his commanding officer at this point. So he's gonna try and defend Buck as best as possible. But a Katana will not fare well against these little popcorns, okay? You need a lot bigger of a plan, a lot better of a plan than that. I just, you know, I built this on a live stream and uh, it was about uh, half as complete as you see it now. And I've just spent hours upon hours just tweaking it. Of course, there are still things that I've not been able to mention. You know, how could I? There is just so much to look at. But I hope you find some little Easter eggs. I hope you notice something that I forgot to mention today. Let me know in the comments down below, what is your favorite part of this diorama? This is is truly legendary, a absolute great climax to all the work I've been doing in England for the few months I've been back. I'm heading to Minnesota now, but once I'm back in England again, I'll be kicking off with another massive large-scale diorama, and this time I'll be creating something brand new, not just the Oni Bridge. I want to thank you, as always, for your continuous support on my projects, and this month we are going to get a reveal through Mega and myself for the new Articulation Flood. We're going to see them this month in the month of July. So this whole game is about to change forever. Once we get new articulation flood, there's going to be a such a resurge in the community, I swear. Like it's what everyone's waiting for. It's what everybody loves building, loves collecting, but the prices for secondhand flood now are just too expensive. So I think it's going to change for the better. So thank you very much for tuning in today. This was another video with the domain. I really hope you enjoyed yourself. I really hope you uh, enjoyed the live stream and you enjoy my projects and you continue supporting the channel and all we do. Shout out to you all. You stay awesome. You stay safe out there, folks. The Flood Firefight Diorama is signing off. Thank you.